be stated at this point. Yeah, I think kind of at this point, everyone knows that it's something that you always have to make sure you, you bring your A game for. Um, I mean, obviously, them not having it for, uh, I think, since 2003, they that's that's one of the things they mark on their calendar where we need to get this ax back back to uh, back to Minnesota. Um, <clears throat> I know that, especially for us, it would kind of it would kind of haunt us if we didn't if we didn't have that um, for a whole year. So I think everyone knows the importance of this week. Um, and basically, you have to make sure that no matter what, you're always bringing your A game because they're going to be bringing theirs. They're going to be they're going to be fighting their tails off this game, and uh, we just kind of have to make sure that we're 100 percent focused uh, throughout this week of practice. Yeah, with the um with the, with the playoffs still out there for you guys, is maybe this this game even even more important than your typical Minnesota game? Do you guys view it that way? I mean, I think uh, obviously that puts a little bit more um, pressure on it, maybe. But I think that this is kind of just what we've been doing all season long: is taking it week by week, no matter who we're facing. Um, we just kind of say that it's kind of a nameless, faceless opponent because um, no matter who you're, who you're playing, you always want to go out there and try to play that perfect game. Uh, and I think that. This team is kind of striving for perfection, knowing that we're never going to be able to actually get there. But um, we're looking to have one of our most complete games in the three phases, offense, defense, special teams. And uh, we just want to come out Saturday, come out fast, come out come out physical, and just get the X back to Madison. I'm guessing you guys aren't just assuming you're going to go out there and, and whip them, right? No, absolutely not. I mean, this is something where uh, we've had plenty of close games uh, since I've been here. And um, you can't go into this game expecting a cakewalk. So you just got to make sure that you're focused every single day and then uh, prepare for Saturday. Gary, how do you view the acts? Do you, have you <coughs> celebrated with it post-game? I know some guys wait until their senior year to feel like they've earned that right. How have you approached it during your time here? Yeah, you know, that's something where as a senior year, uh, once you get to that time, um, and then if you're, if you're lucky enough to come out with a win, get the axe back, then as a senior, you're one of the guys that gets to chop down the goalpost. Um, so for the first four years here, that's just kind of something where the under underclassmen just, they watch the seniors kind of enjoy um, what's been their, their last game uh, for the regular season. And then uh, um, now that it's, now it's the seniors time, obviously we're the, we're the ones that we're hoping that we're gonna be able to get the axe to, to chop down the goalpost. Um, so that'd be, that'd be definitely be something special to uh, kind of uh, go along with our senior season. You've talked before that in the spring, you weren't sure what the other outside linebacker guys were, were going to bring. Um, for Andrew Van Ginkle specifically, when did you know that he would be this effective? When do you think he does so well on the field? Um, I would probably say middle of fall camp um, is kind of when I expected that he'd be playing a lot this season. Um, he was he was uh, holding his ground really well against the one offense, um, and then and making a lot of plays too, and then. I just think once he started getting to the rotation when the season started and kind of proving that um, he could make those plays on a, on a daily basis um, is kind of when I knew that he was going to be uh, a guy who was going to be making a lot of plays for us. Um, I just think that he just he brings a lot of uh, me and Leon are obviously two really physical guys. We kind of pride ourselves in that. Andrew is definitely very, uh, very shaky. He's very good with his hands and pass rush, um, and he, he's a really fast dude. Uh, and so I just think that he brings something to the table where he can he can kind of make O-linemen miss a lot. And um, I just think that, especially when we're rotating three guys to try to keep people fresh, um, that's just it's just something where uh, no matter what, whichever guy's out there, they're going to be fresh, ready to go, and uh, give me 100% each play. He seems like a totally laid back guy off the field. <laughs> Does he just like turn it on, turn it into someone else? <laughs> I think so. Um, I mean, I hang out with him a lot off the field. And uh, he, he's, he's a very quiet guy. Um, and so I just think that whenever it's practice or game day, I think there's just a flip that or a switch that goes off in his head because uh, he's definitely a very laid back and chill kind of guy off the field. Is Minnesota doing a lot of things offensively that, they, that Western Michigan was last year for, under P.J. Fleck? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. The run game is very similar to what they what they ran at Western Michigan. And then I think especially over the last four or five games, they've kind of uh, added the dual threat quarterback type of look. Um, the quarterback that they have right now is extremely athletic, and if you're uh, if you don't maintain your leverage, especially as an outside linebacker, and know your uh, know your reads, um, he's going to be able to outrun you to the edge. And uh, so that's just something that we kind of have to focus on this week. Garrett, how much better is your offensive line this year than say, say two years ago? They had four retro freshmen start against Minnesota. Have you noticed a significant difference when you're going against them in practice? Yeah, I mean, a lot of them are the same same guys from. A couple years ago, um, so they've obviously had a lot of time to, to grow and get a lot of experience. And uh, I mean, we have, in my opinion, two of the best tackles in the in the Big Ten at 
uh, Dieter and, and Dave. And um, so being able to go against them every single day kind of helps us improve our game, uh, knowing that we go against really tough guys on the edges. And then I know the guys in the middle um, are definitely a force. I think I saw somewhere that someone called them like the rolling tsunami of cheese or something like that. Uh, <laughs> so that, that's definitely a, definitely an interesting um, an interesting uh, way to say it. But uh, no, those <clears throat> our five alignment up front are definitely a force. Uh, glad I don't have to go against them on, the, uh, on game day. When you think about Cheek laying out and Connor Sheehy, he's been part of this defense, I mean, a major part for a long time. Mm -hmm. What do you think of when you think of those three guys and their contributions to where this defense has been over the last three or four years? They are probably the least selfish guys on the entire team, and they have been for many years. I mean, a lot of the time they're eating up blocks for outside linebackers, inside linebackers, safeties to make plays, and they, they do it without asking questions. They'll, uh, they'll take two guys for you so that you're free to go make a sack, go make a, a tackle for loss, something like that. And then um, whenever they do have their opportunities to win one-on-one -on -one stuff or get a get a big stop in the backfield and, and get a sack, uh, they, they take advantage of it. And I think it just kind of pumps us up whenever they make that kind of play because we know what they do every single day of practice, every single day um, whenever we have a game. And I just think that those guys are extremely special to this team because of what they, what they do up front. People have talked so much about Ohio State's defensive lines the last couple of years, Michigan's. Does this group rate with those groups, do you think? I mean, maybe they're not as flashy, don't have the sack totals and et cetera, but how do they, how does your group compare to those groups, I guess? You know, in my opinion, I think, uh, especially with the D linemen and then just our front seven in general, I think we have one of the best in the nation. And I just think that everyone plays with resiliency every game. Um, and then we, we're all out there playing for each other. And I think that's what kind of makes us uh, such a great group. Um, and then just knowing that we have the confidence in the back end to make plays uh, and to, to cover guys down the field, I think it just helps work hand in hand. Um, and then I just think that these guys know what we're out there playing for. And it's just, it's one of the most selfless defenses that I've ever been a part of. Um, everyone's pumped up when someone else makes a play. And I think that's why we're kind of able to go out there and be successful. Garrett, how old were you on November 8th, 2003? That was the last time Minnesota won. I was eight, almost nine, I think. Have you ever seen video of that one when their kicker made the game winning field goal at the end? I don't think I saw that. Okay. Uh -uh. It's no. been a long time. That's the yeah, no, I haven't seen that at all, actually. <laughs> okay. Garrett, looking back on the season, how much has Coach Leonard meant to the success of the defense this year? You know, he's, he's, a, he's a great guy to play for. Um, I think one of the reasons why is because he's basically like a player out there. I mean, he'll, he'll go through uh, run fits with us. He'll, he'll um, act as a corner whenever they're doing one-on-one -on -one, um, coverages, and he'll do the run fits with us acting as the corner. And uh, I just think that he kind of has that mentality where he wants, um, even though he's the one calling the plays, calling the shots, he, he's doing it for us, and he knows that uh, he doesn't have to get too fancy with stuff because he knows that we can go out there and execute and make plays. And I think that's just something where he has that trust factor in us, and then we have the trust in him where we can kind of work together and uh, just go out there on Saturday and make plays. What are you thankful for this year? I'm sorry? What are you thankful for this year with Thanksgiving a few days away? What am I thankful yeah. for? I mean, number one is always my family. Uh, they're always out there supporting me. Um, had them all up here this past weekend for senior day. Uh, and, and then just the brotherhood of this team. I mean, I know uh, some emotions were flying Saturday after the game. Um, and then it's just, uh, being with these guys for four or five years um, is, has been something special, and to be able to go out at Camp Randall on Saturday and get get our last win there uh, is, was, is something that I'll never forget. Um, and then uh, I know those guys will never forget it either.